We would now like to introduce you to our keynote speaker, California's State Treasurer, Fiona Ma. Treasurer Ma's story is very much Mission College's story. As California's 34th State Treasurer, Ma is the first woman and first female CPA to be elected to that position. She oversees the world's fifth largest economy. Her parents immigrated to America from China, seeking out a better life. Her parents always said, go ahead, give it a try, and gave constant encouragement to Fiona and her brother. Regardless of the outcome, she found a path in career education, very similar to that of Mission's CTE students. Her path was accounting. She earned a bachelor's degree in accounting from the Rochester Institute of Technology, a master's in taxation at Golden Gate University, and an MBA from Pepperdine. She worked for one of the big four accounting firms and then became involved in San Francisco city politics. She was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 2002 and in 2006 was elected to the California State Assembly. She rose to Speaker Pro Temp as the first Asian American woman to hold that position. For six years, she authored 60 bills which became law. She has been an advocate to those without power curbing human trafficking, advancing small businesses, protecting public education, and protecting taxpayers' money. As the state's banker, Treasurer Ma oversees an investment portfolio of about $127 billion, $35 billion of which are local government funds. She looks out for fellow Californians through accountability and transparency. Without further ado, we introduce California State Treasurer, Fiona Ma. Thank you, President Daniel Beck, for your leadership. Thank you to the instructors, administrators, support staff, and everyone who works at the college. It takes a big team to support your students. Thanks also for inviting me to be your keynote speaker today. It is an honor to spend some time with you on this important milestone. To the class of 2021, I admire you for being tenacious, resourceful, and resilient. The world turned upside down, but you stayed focused. A tough year made you even tougher, and you did it. You went to classes, took care of your family, your children, your parents, and siblings. You kept studying and listening to classes online. Some of you were isolated at home, while others had to risk their health to keep their jobs as frontline workers. Many of you lost your jobs and had to look for help. And sadly, some of you even lost loved ones or friends. I'd like to recognize and thank the aspiring frontline workers, the nurses, EMT and firefighters who were able to continue their education in small classes and graduate. So this year's theme is overcoming adversity. Everyone graduating today could give your own lesson on how you overcame adversity. I'm going to share with you a little bit of my story. I'm the oldest daughter of immigrant parents. I was born in New York City and stayed with my grandparents in Chinatown during the week. For four years, my parents worked to save money and we finally bought our first home on Long Island where I grew up in a community with very few students that looked like me. Since I was young, my parents encouraged us to try everything, to be well-rounded. I got my first job at 10 years old as a mother's helper at our local community pool. I was a top cookie seller in my Brownies and Girl Scout troop. I played in my school's band and later started my own band called the Banana Splits, where I played the drums. I was a synchronized swimmer, was the banker in our fourth grade Snake River Valley project, which I think may have planted the seed to being the state's banker today. I was a cheerleader for a minute but I really excelled in sports where I played four sports in junior and high school and was captain in my senior year. My only advanced placement class in high school was Spanish. Growing up, my parents wanted us to be one of the lead professions, a lawyer, engineer, accountant, or a doctor. Since I was good at math, they decided I should be an accountant. I applied to a bunch of colleges, but decided to attend the Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York because my parents wanted me to be closer to home. I also really liked the tennis coach who was like a second mother to many of us. 
and I played both singles and doubles my entire four years. I'm happy to hear that Mission College has both a men's and a women's tennis team. I also chose RIT because it had a paid co-op program. Many companies came on campus to recruit us for internships, and I did both of mine in New York City working with one of the big eight accounting firms in the trust and estate department. I would highly recommend doing paid internships as this is a great first step into a company to be able to prove yourself and see whether that company is the right fit for you. While I was in my second year of college, my parents decided to move to San Francisco to be closer to my grandparents. So as the dutiful oldest daughter, I moved to San Francisco after graduation and accepted a job with that same big eight accounting firm in the real estate tax department this time. I have to say it was a culture shock to meet people that look like me in California and to meet so many people from diverse backgrounds. But when I started working my first professional job, I learned about something else, what they call the glass and bamboo ceilings. Over the past 30 years, I've broken a lot of ceilings, not because I tried to, but because I have a curious nature, I really like people, am always open to new opportunities and willing to step up when called. One of the main reasons, or one of, one of the main lessons I learned is that if you don't like the ceiling you're working under, build your own house. I was a young, energetic accountant. However, I didn't see any women or people of color in leadership positions. So I decided to start my own accounting firm and be my own boss at the age of 28. I started to network with a lot of community and business groups to meet potential clients and was recruited to be the president of the Asian Business Association. That was the first time I had to go out and meet with lobby, uh, meet with and lobby local government officials. I went to Sacramento to testify on bills and got involved in the White House Conference on Small Business under President Bill Clinton. It sparked my fascination with government and politics and gave me a window into the world of public service. To learn more, I took out a part-time job with former Senator John Burton, where I handled constituent cases involving the Employment Development Department, the Franchise Tax Board, and other agencies that deal with finance and taxes. As a CPA, I volunteered to help with the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, the VITA program, to help low-income families prepare their taxes. I'm happy to learn that Mission College also trains people for the VITA program. This is a great opportunity to help people and also enable you to do your own taxes and tax planning. Through those experiences, I knew it was my life's calling to serve my community and represent those who have a small voice, no voice, and to level the playing field. In 2002, I officially threw my name in the game and ran for my first public office. I won election as the supervisor for the Sunset District on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. In 2006, I was elected to the State Assembly and was selected by the Speaker to be his right-hand person to serve as the first Asian American female Speaker Pro Tem in our state's history. In 2014, I ran for the Board of Equalization, which is California's elected tax board. I represented 23 counties and I loved driving up and down the state to meet with different community groups, learn about different industries and work closely with small business owners again. Being a CPA on the Board of Equalization was like taking a kid to a candy store. I was frequently using all of the skills and experiences I learned when I was working as an accountant. My father, who was not enthusiastic about me leaving accounting for government, was finally happy that I was putting my tax and accounting skills to work. I finally felt qualified for a position. In 2018, former Treasurer John Chung announced his run for governor. I seized the opportunity, entered the treasurer's race, and won more votes than any other candidate for treasurer has ever won. Now I'm the primary banker for California, the fifth largest economy in the world. I love my job, and more importantly, my father is proud of me again and not bugging me to go back to the accounting world. So being the state treasurer is a big responsibility. My office processes more than $2 trillion in transactions in a typical year. 
I oversee a short-term investment portfolio of $140 billion, and I'm the agent of sale for all state bonds and trustee for $93 billion in state debt. But there is much more to my job. I also chair 13 boards and commissions that do all kinds of interesting work. We are ground zero in the housing crisis, financing thousands of units of affordable housing in California. I also oversee two environmental committees that support innovative businesses fighting climate change. These are giant companies like Tesla, which is just down the street and builds electric cars, but there are also smaller firms like the ones in the Central Valley that turn waste into energy on dairy farms. They are cleaning and greening our state. I also chair three different savings programs. Cal Savers helps people save for retirement in if their company doesn't have a plan. Another one, Cal Able, helps people with disabilities. And ScholarShare 529, which encourages parents to save for their kids' college education. So here's a real life example I'd like to cite called the latte factor. Instead of buying a $5 latte each day at Starbucks, you can save $100 per month. And if you invest that $100 each month for 18 years with a 6% rate of return, that would total $38,381 after 18 years. Check it out. I opened an account myself, which I will transfer to my future niece. It's a great way to help your children or any young person in your life achieve their college dreams. Now, I wanna turn this conversation back to you. I know that many of you are immigrants or sons and daughters of immigrants like myself, and that 33 different languages are spoken on campus. Many of you are first in your family to go to college. I know life is sometimes a struggle, but there is a bright future ahead. To get there, you have to work hard and take advantage of opportunities. Always say yes when someone invites you to an event or asks you to get involved. Find that mentor or mentors who can help guide you. Have a positive can-do attitude. Don't cut corners and always strive to go above and beyond. Have integrity, be inclusive, listen to people, understand what motivates them and try to create win-win situations. When you help others, you're helping yourself be a more giving, compassionate and empathetic person. Believe me, people will recognize you for who you are, what you've done, and what you stand for, and more doors will open for you. Find your passion and follow your mission. Whether it is being a firefighter like my husband, a teacher like my mother, an engineer like my father, or a chiropractor like my younger sister. And don't worry if it takes a while. As I mentioned, it took me years to discover my true passion for public service. Once I did, I knew exactly what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. So congratulations to you all for what you have achieved and what you will achieve. My one piece of advice, dream big, and don't forget what you've learned, the people you've met, and the values instilled at Mission College. Thank you and go out and conquer the world.